So I just finished watching this amazing Netflix series from Ricky Gervais called Afterlife, all right? And if you haven't watched it, there's going to be spoilers, but if you don't plan on watching it, please stick around. There are so many great life lessons from the finale, all right? But before I get started, I do wanna let you know, um, there are going to be subjects that we talk about that could be sensitive, so just a little trigger warning. If you struggle with suicidal ideation and things like that, make sure you check out the description down below. You can go ahead and turn this video off, but there are going to be some resources. Reach out and ask for help. But yeah, anyways, let's jump into this and talk about the amazing life lessons Ricky Gervais gives us about how to do whatever the heck you want and be happy. What is up everybody? This is Chris from The Rewired Soul where we talk about the problem but focus on the solution. And if you're new to my channel, my channel's all about mental health. And what I like to do is pull different topics or subjects from like movies, TV shows, and things like that to try to teach you how to maybe potentially improve your life. So if you're into that stuff, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. And quick disclaimer, I am not a licensed therapist or psychologist if you need that kind of help check down in the description below or go talk to your doctor or insurance provider and get some help, all right? I am going to be talking about the show, Ricky Gervais, as well as my own personal life experience, life philosophies and things like that, all right? So anyways, quick little recap of what this show is about, okay? And remember, spoilers, okay? But anyways, Ricky Gervais um, plays a man named Tony. And Ricky Gervais, uh, he wrote this show, he directed this show, and Tony is a man who lost his wife to cancer, his wife Lisa. She was the love of his life, she was the light of his day, um, just everything, just so in love with her. And throughout the show, there's a bunch of like flashbacks and videos they recorded and they like messed with each other and goofed off and, and all of that. And when she passes away, he just goes off the deep end and he actually attempted suicide and he has thought about suicide ever since, right? And he's so angry and upset that this world took his wife away from him that he kind of gets in his idea, this idea in his head like, you know, no matter what I do, it doesn't matter because I can always just, you know, commit suicide. So he decides that to, you know, to take his anger out, he's just gonna punish the world. So he decides to do whatever the heck he wants and just be a jerk to everybody, right? So we kind of follow this story. And if you want, if you're somebody who watched Afterlife, I'm not sure if I'm gonna make more videos, but if you want to, I wanna dive deeper into other subjects. If you're interested in it, like there is, you know, somebody who was addicted to drugs and they overdose. And yeah, I wanna talk about that if you're interested in it, um, as well as some other different topics from this show. But in this video, I want to focus primarily on the finale. So it's only six episodes, so if you haven't watched it, just go check it out. Six 30-minute episodes. Doesn't take too long. Phenomenal show. So anyways, in the, in the final episode, one of the things that comes up is Ricky Gervais's atheism, okay? So if you know Ricky Gervais, he is a very vocal atheist, and he talks about it a lot. He's been interviewed about it and all of that. But anyways, there is a young woman at his office. He works for a local newspaper, a free newspaper, and she comes up and asks him, like, why don't you just do whatever you want, like uh, rape and murder people if you're an atheist and there's no point in trying to get to heaven or whatever. And he says, I do do whatever I want, and I rape and murder as much as I want. And she's like looking at him like, what? And he's like, yeah, I don't do that at all. So I'm doing it as much as I want, but I don't do it at all. And that's something that I've talked about before with atheism, like there's this like misconception that atheists are just like running amok and all that. But no, there is, you know, the human conscious and just being a good person, you know what I mean? So he touches on that. But anyways, we see his character really develop and you know, um, the first scene that I want to talk about is when he goes to his therapist for the last time. Like throughout the show, like he's going to his therapist and talking about his depression and everything like that. And his therapist sucks, okay? <laughs> like there are great therapists and there are terrible therapists and he's showing a terrible therapist. So how are you? A good day is when I don't go around wanting to shoot random strangers in the face and then turn the gun on myself. His therapist is like on his phone texting and talking about how he's like in a Twitter back and forth, like in the middle of the session. And Ricky's like, uh, you know? So yeah, in the final one, you know, he, he talks about 
how he doesn't want to do therapy anymore. He talks about how, you know, uh, not everybody is an a-hole. There are good people out there. And that is a huge revelation, right? Like when we get stuck in that mindset of just hating the world, we group everybody together, right? We lose faith in humanity and we're like, everybody's terrible, everybody sucks, right? But this first revelation of his is like, not everybody is a jerk, you know? But then he confronts his therapist and says, you, are a jerk. I don't like you. I'm stopping therapy, right? Well, anyways, the therapist lets him know that his, you know, because the therapist gets all upset and he tells Ricky that uh, his brother-in-law, Matt, and um, is having marital problems, right? And Ricky's like, whoa, you know? And throughout the, the series, Matt is Ricky Gervais's brother-in-law. And, you know, he's been trying to help Ricky throughout his depression and trying to convince Ricky not to commit suicide. And, you know, um, Ricky Gervais's character, Tony, he's just not hearing it, not having it um, throughout the whole thing. As much as Matt tries to help, Ricky Gervais is just like, no, not, you know, he's still just, you know, being mean to everybody and nasty to everybody and being mean to people in the office. They even go out to like a comedy show. And uh, Tony is like, he says some stuff to the comedian at that show and Matt just doesn't know what to do. But anyways, when Tony figures out that Matt's marriage is having troubles, he goes straight back to the office and he sits down and he talks with Matt. And he tells Matt, he's like, hey, what's what's going on? What's going on, you know what I mean? And that's when Matt finally snaps. And he tells, he tells Tony like, yo, like you're not the only one with problems. Like you're running around being a jerk to everybody and you're not the only one with problems. And Matt like asked him, he's like, are you surprised? Are you really surprised, right? And that's something that I try to talk about because from my personal experience, <clears throat> I can get into a very selfish and self-centered place when I'm dealing with my own mental health issues. One of the things that people taught me when I was working on my mental health was like, reach out and ask other people how they're doing. Like, talk to them, get out of yourself for one second and ask somebody else how they're doing. And when you're in it, when you're in that depression, when you're in that dark place, right? Again, like myself, as well as other people I've worked with, you know, we don't think about anybody else. We don't think about how it's affecting anybody else. I actually spoke at a high school this morning. I'm gonna do a video about that. I, I'm speaking there again tomorrow. But anyways, like I, I, I try to teach people you know, what worked for me, which is getting outside of yourself and, and seeing how other people are doing. Like it helps us quit thinking about ourselves 24 seven. So after he kind of has that talk with Matt, he he starts complimenting, you know, the, the people in his office and thanking them for being there for him, you know, through this entire time. And he even thanks Kath. So Kath is the, the woman who, um, like she, she kind of annoys him throughout the series and she came over and asked him about like the atheism thing that I mentioned earlier in this video. But he even thanked Kath, right? He thanks her for distracting him by coming over and annoying him every single day. He thanks her for that. And I think that's huge for all of us. Like we need to realize that every situation in our life, every person in our life, can be something that, you know, benefits us and our mental well-being in some way, shape, or form. You know what I mean? So I love that part right there because he's saying, yo, even though you've been annoying me and you annoy me on a daily basis, you helped take my mind off of that pain and that hurt that I'm feeling, right? And, you know, part of this show and uh, when it comes back to um, Tony thanking Matt, it's like this overarching thing where like, Tony was distracted long enough and kept alive long enough by the people in his life to end up getting to these places where he can see the bigger, broader picture, you know? And he ends up thanking Matt for never giving up on him. And like that, I just rewatched the finale so I can make this video and that just put a huge smile on my face. And my suggestion to all of you, take it or leave it, do what you will. But if you're somebody who's been in a dark place or you've um, dealt with mental health issues or whatever, like after this video or even pause this video and just text somebody, call somebody and thank them. Thank them for being there for you. Like a lot of you know that, you know, I've been going through a rough time. I just, you know, um, took my two weeks off of YouTube and everything like that. 
And something that I've done is just every few days is text the people, you know, who have been there for me and just let them know like, hey, I really appreciate it. You know, all the people who picked up the phone when I was, you know, freaking out or stuck in my head, you know, I, I try to thank these people and let them know, like it's not going unnoticed, like thank you. So, you know, it, it might make you feel better just by letting those people know that they're they're appreciated. Because like I said, you know, from my experience, like when we're dealing with these struggles, we get really selfish and self-centered and we don't think about all these other things. Like, you know, a lot of us, you know, myself as well as you, we've been in that place where we've tried to help people and we get to those places like, am I even helping? What's the point? Why even talk to them? Why even try to help them, right? Think about how good it would feel for them to thank you, okay? So the the last part I wanna talk about is um, the woman um, Tony meets in, this, in the cemetery, Ricky Gervais's character, and I, I forgot her name, but anyways, Throughout the show, he he talks to her um, because she's there, and she talks to her, her husband, whose grave uh, uh, gravestone is right next to Ricky Gervais's uh, wife in the show, right? And he talks to her and gets like life advice or whatever. But I love that scene, this this scene in the finale, because he sits down and he says, "How are you doing?" Like part of his character's growth, um, Tony's growth in this finale is recognizing how selfish and self-centered he's been. He's going around and just expecting, you know, everybody to, you know, cater to what he wants and everything like that. And he's allowed to do whatever. But you see it again, we sit down on the bench and for the first time in this entire first season, he asks her how she is doing. And like, you see this kind of growth and he just sits there and listens because she lost her husband too. And they were married for like decades, right? And this is the first time he's asking, her how she's doing so anyways they end up talking a little bit more and everything and you know one of the final revelations that tony comes uh comes to is that he can still do whatever the hell he wants right and that's the title of this video like you can do whatever you want right like no matter what you could do whatever you want but the revelation that tony has is like doing whatever you want doesn't mean running around and just trying to punish everybody, right? He took on this like kind of vigilante mindset, like I'm gonna punish everybody for that hurt and the pain I feel, right? And he decides that he's gonna use his superpower for good and he's going to, you know, punish by being a jerk to the people who are a-holes, right? But part of him doing what he wants to do is he realized when he's there for other people, when he's nice to other people, when he's kind to other people, when he thanks other people, when, you know, when he listens to other people, that's doing what he wants to do and it feels good. Like, I cannot tell you guys enough, like, like that's one of the reasons I have this channel. Helping other people feels good. I want to do it. I love doing it. Like I might make a video at some point about like um, uh, something I heard from a meditation teacher um, about how there's like no true altruism, right? Because helping other people, even if you're not expecting anything in return, helping other people just feels good. Okay, so I love, love, love this show. I highly recommend you guys watch it if you haven't yet. Um, again, like if you guys have watched it or those of you who have watched it, if you want me to break down some other um, really interesting things in this show, such as, you know, addiction and grief and loss and things like that, let me know down in the comments. I have like a whole notepad filled with video ideas. So let me know, or if you have suggestions about things you want me to kind of dive into, let me know down in the comments below. All right, I'm also thinking about checking out that show um that new show on netflix what's it called like love love death and robots something like that. i keep hearing really really good things i'm thinking about checking that out and maybe doing breakdowns of that too but anyways that's all i got for this video if you like this video please give it a thumbs up if you're new make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell and a huge huge thank you to everybody supporting the channel over on patreon you are all amazing and if you would like to become a patron and get exclusive content and all that kind of good stuff click or tap right there all right thanks so much for watching I'll see you next time.